Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you, except the meaning of destiny is to make firm establish and the meaning of angel is messenger. So my guest and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Anne Villeneuve. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching this show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, and transform their present, so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life progression, past life regression, guided meditation, angelic reiki, angel oracle cards, and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny and a journey through lifetimes. Now, each episode of the show covers various steps of your journey, a mini guided meditation of angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Ambilla Nath, about creating balance in your life. Now, Ambilla is a spiritual lifestyle coach who knows that the biggest challenges people face in their lives is the fear and stress that they will not get the life that they deserve or will not find the love they deserve or a career business they want. She helps you create balance in your life, whether you're juggling to find love, managing an existing relationship or striving to create a successful career or business. And Billa has been on her own spiritual journey where she went from being a spectator to a psychic by opening up to her intuition and connecting to the universe. And Billa has worked with clients for over two decades, helping them build the life they deserve. She's a paid international public speaker, coach, podcaster, magazine editor, chat show host, tarot reader, energy healer, spiritual teacher. Now with testimonials such as when I started work with Ambilla, it was just to raise my own self-confidence and get clarity of what I wanted in my life. Ambilla helped me to believe in myself and feel that I could achieve more than I thought I could. And she is a great person to work with. She's always striving to help you and push you to being the best that you can be without any hidden agenda as to what you can get out of it. So without further delay, hello Ambilla and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? I'm absolutely fabulous and thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. I'm sitting there going, who's that person? <laughs> <laughs> That's so wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm so honoured. <laughs> uh, so, sometimes we need reminding, you know, you know, that, that what people what people think of us. It, it's so true because I've had this conversation so many times and we're so used to giving and appreciating other people and their talents and skills and stuff and when it comes to ourselves we kind of it's not that we ignore ourselves we just don't give the same credit so thank you for that oh you're welcome so before we get into this fascinating conversation i want to remind you that you can also ask questions leave comments and thoughts as both Ambilla and i want you to be part of this conversation so please do not be shy so Ambilla, why don't you tell us more about your journey and how we can create balance in our life uh, my journey, and I, when I was writing for you in the sense of the uh, bio, and I went, actually, I was a spectator. So when I started, I always had an interest, you know, with regards to palmistry, astrology, anything with regards to knowing more about myself and my future. So um, in my early years, I used to go and have tarot readings, palmistry, all of that, you know as you do you want to know you're going to be fine life's going to work out for you and everything and i'm a tarot reader and, and advanced energy healer now but back in the day i always was drawn to tarots and you know how it is that you can buy those packs with the books and you know then you're sort of sitting there trying to teach yourself and i tried throughout i think my 20s nine you know teens and kind of on and off in my life i would pick up tarot cards get that and then give it off to charity again again no it's too hard and but it was always a spectator i kind of never thought i had that ability i don't think i even looked into how people get that ability you kind of just you know go yeah you have it i'm busy doing something else and it wasn't until um 
I'm not going to go into my complete life story, but you can read it on the website. But it was when I went through a period in my life where um, I'm, for viewers who don't realize it, I'm an Indian woman, Asian, British Asian. Um, so within my culture, the expectations of a woman are very different, you know, to a man. And now it's changed generation wise. But when I was in my 20s, it was very different. And I fought my family just to have equal rights as a woman to be able to you know live the life I wanted and everything so that was a huge major transition in my life to the extent it meant that I actually left my family to um, start my own life and for two years I didn't have any contact and anything so it was during that time that my transition to I suppose energies and understanding that world and intuition started opening up for me I came to the wonderful uh, city of Brighton, which I absolutely love and I've been here ever since. Um, and we are known for that, you know, that kind of energy and alternativeness and people are open to it. So I was kind of put in, you know, instinctively in the right hub to be able to kind of, you know, really enjoy that and open up to it. And it was a natural progression because I think I just started meeting people who, were already exploring that or you know into reiki or some kind of healing work and i was just naturally drawn to hanging around those people um and getting energy work done you know on myself and other things but it wasn't until i think my first relationship when i moved to um brighton that i actually started to understand or explore what energy was in the sense of feeling other people's energies and that was due to a relationship I had so I started picking up his energy and I couldn't understand why all of a sudden I'm really happy and then I'm angry and or you know or something else going on I'm going what the hell and because I was getting so many um readings done phone readings um that time I actually asked the um, psychic I was talking to going what on earth is going on so they started teaching me I was paying to have teaching lessons <laughs> and open up to going ah oh, so that's what I'm experiencing um, so yeah so it's kind of been a gradual introduction into really beginning to explore and embrace and even I suppose select and choose what I do and don't want um, because when I came I think it was so that was the beginning of my life and then five years in as I'm being in Brighton I um, transitioned and moved into another um, property and that was the part where it really kind of exploded open because I started going for regular tarot readings with local tarot readers and stuff not not regular, regular, but regular. Um, and one particular one, I had a really good rapport with. And she said, oh, I'm going to start doing psychic circles. And I was like, well, what is psychic circles? And being still new to the area, because we have a lot of transitional yeah. people that come and go. So I didn't really have a network of people that are really new. So I thought, great, you know, great way to meet people, something I'm going to enjoy, you know, evenings out. So it was via that psychic circle that I actually learned so much because she taught everything. She taught absolutely everything from pendulum to mediumship to energy work, tarot. She specialized in tarot mm -hmm. um, and so many other things. It, nothing was left off the table because it was very much about what are we drawn to? And it was more about experiencing, you know, what we're drawn to what we want to open to so which i thought was absolutely fantastic and it was via that that i got a lot of my teachings and it was via that that i started to really embrace and allow and trust um what this meant and when i say trust i mean i trust when i'm talking to my clients or i'm doing my work i don't trust when it's about my life and me yeah which yeah which you know at points can be quite 
um, yeah, not good <laughs> because I miss opportunities. But yeah, so it's easier, so easy because I completely trust it when it's, you know, talking about my clients and guiding them and everything else. So all of that, I was always a life coach. I've been a life coach um, since 2003 when I graduated and it was new to the UK then and, you know, anybody I approached when I don't have mental health problems get yeah. away from me so it took me a long time to establish life coaching and then when um so I had other businesses and other things but then I went through a period where I thought people are beginning to know me as a life coach and life coach you know in the sense of the um I'll call it the logic in this practical, you know, you're teaching them skills and things because I've got a very corporate background. But how on earth do I bring spirituality into it? Because that is a big part of me. So half of my life, in the sense of the people in my life knew the complete me that, you know, I, yeah. I do energy work, healing, all of that, and I'm a coach. And then another set part of, you know, people in life didn't know that because I came from a corporate background and I thought if I tell them that I'm doing this work, they're going to think, oh, my God, she is weird. Yeah. I'm not working with her, you know, and I had all of these judgments in my own mind that I just kept them as separate. I even had two separate websites with two different identities. I had an yeah. alias for my spiritual work because I thought if they search by my name and fi find that association, oh my God, that's it, I'm out of business. Yeah, And that was the way I used to think. So it took a l long time and it was um, back in 2017. Um, I will share this. Um, I lost my elder sister to cancer. Oh. So, I think that was the point in my life that kind of made me realize going, I don't want to hide anymore. Mm. You know, I just want to be me. I don't care if people accept me or don't accept me and, you know, what they think of me, but this is the work I want to do and this is who I am. So the half of the people who didn't know, I put out a Facebook post and I went, this is me, this is what I do, I'm a reader, I'm an energy healer, I'm this, I'm that. And I went, I'm not going to care about their judgments. That's it. It's out there. This is me. I was absolutely taken aback with the flood of love and um, adoration and acceptance that came back. And I just went, who are these people? <laughs> They're like, oh, my God. Yeah. So that in itself was like, oh, my God, has it been me all this time that, you know, has been standing in my way? But as soon as that opened, it's kind of like in the last three years, I've been fully living my life, fully being me. There's nothing hidden, you know, from anybody. Um, and that in itself has really helped with regards to the amount of acceleration of work and what I do and the people that I'm being brought to, you know, it, it's just opening up more and more doors. I would like to say organically, but we all know that in the background we are doing the work. So, you know, it's just connecting, those dots get connected somehow. And we kind of think, oh my God, that happened overnight. But but we all know it's been, you know, in the yeah. making somehow so many years down the line. So, yeah, so energy healing was something so tarot reading I embraced completely. Um, I got drawn to that more than mediumship. I closed off to mediumship um, because it didn't resonate with me. Yeah. And actually it was an experience I had when I was going through my um, psychic opening. I, um, I will share this because some may be able to resonate. So one night while, you know, I'm still in the early stages of my development and all these energies are opening up and all of these things are opening up to me. I was I went for a weekend at um, my parents home. So I'm in the guest room, you know, and all of a sudden it's kind of late night. And I'm hearing this giggling like a child kind of, you know, giggling and I kind of you know get woken up and it's an all adult house. 
So yeah. I know that there's no children. We didn't have any, you know, grandchildren staying or anything like that. So I'm kind of going, you know, what's this? And I kind of half asleep, but awake, you know, turn over and I see an arm from, you know, elbow to a hand reach out to touch me. I absolutely <laughs> bolted on the bed, put the light on when I'm not having any of this. I am not universe i am not open this to this i do want this do not allow this and i think that's what stopped me from going into mediumship because yeah. i just thought i'm sorry i can't i'm not ready for it i probably never will be yeah so i make it very clear to my clients that yes i can do it but i choose not to yeah because i think you have to be very clear with regards to what you're ready for and what resonates with you and not make assumptions because i think a lot of people make assumptions that if you use the word psychic that it automatically means you can talk to the dead because yeah. that's the association with what psychic is but psychic is so much more because it's about your intuition it's about your ability it's about you connecting to whatever you want to call it the higher self the universe god you know whatever name you want to give it but an energy that is so much more than us yeah and it's that connection um and how you use that ability to be able to express to other people and help other people is i think the journey that we're actually on um and thank you for my title spiritual lifestyle coach i know i call myself that but hearing it is like oh wow okay so to explain that element of it is that i want people to know that in my life coaching i use spirituality i use it to i i give a lot of practical help and stuff like that because that's what coaching is but i also use those skills i use my energy healing skills and they're not just reiki they're advanced so i'm looking at people's traumas i'm looking at where they're storing that pain in their body and i'm actually talking to the body yeah. finding out what that trauma is finding out what it is that's got stuck and helping to move that on so with regards to all of those abilities, I say to people that that's the journey they're going to be on, that I'm going to be using those when needed to really help them to do that deeper work, because it's not just about here, change your life, change your thought pattern, change this, but actually going, no, let's get to the root of this. Yes, you're going to go through pain, but then there's also a healing at the other end of it, and I'm there for you. So I use those skills within my coaching and people are aware that when they come onto any of my programs or you know talk to me or anything, eventually there will be an element of the deeper work yeah. because I can't help it, this is who I am. I kind of feel that now as I'm getting um, a little bit older, <laughs> a little bit older, um, but also, coming out to myself in the confidence of okay I'm a spiritual and owning it and not you know as I said been hiding away from it it's resonating more and more with me that this is the work I am here to do this is you know been my purpose to really help heal people inside and out and help them through that journey because nobody wants to go through that journey because of the pain everybody wants to avoid it it's easier to stay in the pain because that they know what to expect. Mm. They know how to deal with it. They know, um, you know, how many pills to pop because I've got a pain. So, you know, all of the regularities, but to kind of go, well, actually, you know what, you can stop taking the pills. You just need to, you know, start moving more, maybe do yoga, maybe go for a walk, maybe, you know, start moving those limbs. And they're kind of like, yeah, but it's cold outside. Why would I want to do that? You know? And it's nice and cozy. So, and rather than, you know, not push them outside the comfort zone, that's why, um, you know, people don't want to go through that pain. Yeah. So um, a lot of the work is to help them through that journey and hold their hands. And that is basically how I've got to being where I am today. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. And you've kind of like got that balance in your life, haven't you? Because you've got the balance of sort of like the more practical um, side with the spiritual side and, and it's in balance. And I think all of us 
have to have that balance. We can't just be all spiritual, not practical. We can't be all practical, not spiritual. We have to have that balance within our lives. Exactly. And I think, when was it? Early 2000s that the you know buzzword balance came in mm. and it confused the hell out of everything and everybody because automatically people went, oh, it's got to be 50-50. Otherwise, I'm not living my life the way it should be. Oh, my God. And you can't have a 50-50 ever. Because sometimes you, it will be, you know, more spiritual, not spiritual, work, love, you know, something will take precedence because th that's just the way life is. But it's balancing your energy more than balancing the life so that you're able to cope with all the stresses, fears, everything that's thrown into your pot. Um, and that's my interpretation of balance, not so much regarding you know, how much, well, of course, having the work-life balance, but if you're balancing your energies, then that should hopefully, you know, be happening anyway. And we all strive for that. I think we all definitely strive, you know, to have that balance so that we're able to lead the lives we want, but also believe in ourselves that we can create that life. Mm. And I find with my clients, and certainly in my own journey, that as human beings, we kind of expect it now. Yes. We, we've made the decision, so we want it now. We, we don't want it in five years. We don't want it in 10 years. Something like, yes, saving for a new house or, you know, career path or business, whatever. Yes, you can put into context. But there's a lot of other things in your life that if you've made that decision, then you want it to show up now. And that's not going to happen. Um, I have a spiritual group and one of the things I've said to them is that your spiritual growth mirrors your own personal development growth. So you can't expect to be spiritual in the sense of, you know, the authentic self without doing the inner work, without healing your own pain. You can't turn around and say, just because you have 20 decks of tarot cards and you have all the crystals in the world and all of that, that you're spiritual if you're hiding away and not doing and dealing with your pain. I'm not saying you don't have the abilities. It's just that you don't have the deeper abilities that you can have and the connection because you're standing in your own way. So in my belief, the two definitely go hand in hand. And that's another balancing part of your life that you've got to be willing you know to heal yourself and you and I we do this work so we know as healers ourselves that if we're not going through that journey we're not being authentic to our clients and expecting them to do it when we can't lead the way yeah yeah, t t totally. You know, what's the say? Um, what, what's the saying? Heal, heal, heal thyself. Yeah, Some, something like that, isn't it? And and it is. You, you know, if, if you were to put in the context, if if you're in a plane and the plane's suddenly going to crash and you've got a child with you, they say you put the oxygen mask on first. Yeah. Then you put it on. Then you put on the child, because you're taking care of yourself. And when you take care of yourself, you're able to take care of other people and help them more. Yeah. Completely. And, and I think it's, it's all of these little things of um, changing people's mindsets to kind of realize that back in our days, you know, when we were in our 20s, a long time ago, yeah, long time um, ago. I remember those days. <laughs> <laughs> So when we were in our 20s, internet didn't exist. We no. didn't have this knowledge. We did not know of the types of people that could really help us and guide us and all of this um, information and healing and everything that's available to us. But now people can fully embrace it. And I think one of the main things, excuse me, is to help people to get over that fear that this journey is painful. Mm. It's yes, it is to an extent, but it's knowing that you're not alone because when you're working with someone, then they're with you. They're not going to kind of leave you and go, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm going to give yeah. you all the problems. Here's all your tools. And I'm just going to walk away. Um, a good healer, 
you know, whether they're a um, spiritual healer or a coach, you know, or any type of therapy, massage, whatever, they are there sharing that journey with you and guiding you. So I think it's important for people to kind of open up to and, you know, realize that, that it's not actually as bad as they think it is. I think it's more the concept that they have that it will be. Um, and I think, you know, when they open up to that journey, that they can actually go, actually, it wasn't actually that bad. It was quite enjoyable and feel lighter because you do when you're making those shifts happen. It's not just what you feel within your body, but you see it, you know, within your environment and the life that you want to create. And it's the concept of one of the things regarding my corporate background, I used to be a um, IT trainer and business consultant. So I was very much in the technical world because that's the companies I worked for. But then I was also in the client world yeah. where people didn't know technology and you know have that basic understanding. So with my background, I was able to speak both languages. I was able to speak in um, terms that the non-technical people could understand you know how computers work how their you know business works or whatever and then go to the technical guys and do all the technical speak and go yeah you need to change this in the program and that's not working or whatever and and both you know worked and one of the amazing things i've noticed is that i'm able to do that within my coaching so i have a lot of clients and i don't expect clients to be open or understand spirituality to the level that i do or anybody else does but i'm able to help guide them into understanding things and you know understanding examples like i said to you regarding people don't want to you know look into their pain because they would rather carry on having the leg pain than go for a walk which would help to heal the pain because it's about movement rather than going into the spiritual stuff going well yes you've got hidden trauma and you know your chakra is not working and this is not and that's not aligned and they'll be like oh what? yeah so, and they switch off and they're like, okay, I'm going to go to somebody else. So I have that added benefit of going, I completely honor that you're not. I'm not expecting to, you to understand at all, but I can help you to understand in ways that will help to benefit you. I'm not going to convert you in any you know shape or form, but I will help you to do what you need to do so that you're helping yourself. And um, and a lot of people um, actually appreciate that and they're able to resonate. They actually, I'm not saying I'm converting people, but I am noticing that people go, oh, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Prime example I used in one of my talks was that I was saying to you know people, I said, you don't need to know about energies or understand it or you know, feel it. But I said, prime example, everybody in this world has experienced when you're looking for a property, whether it's a rental or you're buying, you can see 600 properties that are the same, match everything you want, but there'll be one property you'll walk into and it might be smaller, have less bedrooms, whatever, but it just feels right. Yeah. But you can't explain why it feels right and it just does. And I went, well, that's energy. Yeah. And that is you know, a simple form of energy and you understand it but you put the name to it that it just feels right and that's absolutely fine. And people are like, oh, I never thought of that. And you're like, well, that is energy because you're resonating with the energy of the space and you know, and your energy. And it's kind of like, yeah, this feels right for me. This is where I'm gonna you know, build my home. So a lot of people went, oh God, thank you so much for sharing that. That really, you know, I, I got it. I'm, I got what you meant by it. So I think it's also about helping to educate them in ways that they understand. Yeah. And then they're able to embrace and not be afraid of things. Because I think a lot of fear comes from not understanding. Yes. And when you understand, then it's like, okay, I can make that choice. Then I can choose. Um, so, yeah. So as I'm kind of advancing in my journey, I'm finding it. Actually, I'm enjoying it. I enjoy the work, I enjoy the connection, I enjoy being able to walk away with that feeling of, I help somebody. Um, so yeah, so that's all been amazing. 
Yeah, and and it, you know, and it is is absolutely um, amazing. And as you said, it is allowing people to actually we're we're just kind of like facilitators, really, on their journey um, for them to help themselves. We're we're there holding their hands. We're giving them because when people feel that they've done it themselves, it works a lot, a lot better. Yeah. Well, they're getting out of their own way. And it's, you know, every time I see a person or working with a client or that somebody comes in front of me, what I see is them. And then I see all the obstacles they put in front of them. And it's kind of like being in an assault course. You know, they don't see it because they're kind of like avoiding yeah. it because of the walking around it or trying to, you know, or just sitting there going, nope, I'm not even touching it. So, but I can see that in their energy field. Um, I can feel it. And um, so therefore, I'm able to see what they're ready for. One thing also to, um, you know, tell people about is that you're only going to release what you're ready for. Mm -hmm. So there's no way you're going to work with a healer, you know, for, for on one session, a couple of sessions, and then that's it. You're going to have your magnificent life and whatever. Because every step we take, and this is also in our own journeys, you know, it's continuous until the day we die. Yeah. It's never done. So every journey we take and every obstacle we kind of um, keep removing, there will be other things because we're constantly being pushed out of our comfort zones. So there'll be other things that, you know, prop up. So we kind of might go, oh, yeah, OK, I've given up tea. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I can live without caffeine. I'm OK with that. And then all of a sudden, <clears throat> but then you've got addicted to chocolate and cocoa yeah. and stuff. And then all of a sudden it's like, no, you can't have that either. And you're like, no. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, OK, you know, I'll do green juice. So this constantly you're going to get pushed, um, you know, out of your comfort zone. To, and keep on adjusting in terms of your life. And that's just a given for every single person, whether you take a journey or don't take a journey. And I think it's just being having that awareness that it's all part of your growth because we never stop growing. No. That it's, but you choose whether you want to stop growing. Yeah, um, absolutely. And that leads us very nicely into growth and um, information in that, as you know, um, I do um, angel oracle card readings and um, guided meditations. And each week I like to ask my guests what they would like. So, Ambilla, would you like me to pull you and those watching an oracle card or would you like me to do a mini guided meditation? I would love a card. Absolutely. Being a tarot reader yourself, it's quite nice when somebody else actually <laughs> does readings for you. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> and, uh, so as um, some of you may be aware, when I do the um, Angel Oracle cards, I don't predict the future. The way I work is everything is the present. So even though I work with past life stuff, when I work with the past life stuff, it's to heal the past so that you're fully present. And when I work with the future, it's so that you know where your future is, so you're not worried about it in the present. You can actually get in with your present. So everything is what you need to know now. So what does Ambilla? Oh, OK. <laughs> we use, we'll use these ones. So what does Ambilla and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? And perfect card, um, as they always are. Travelling lightly, simplify your life. Yeah. How perfect is that to come up with what we've actually been talking about today? Exactly. Completely. Um, yeah. And that uh, you know, and 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 it is, and it is a case of, you know. Just, just simplify your life, you know, make it as simple. Life isn't really complicated. We just make it complicated. But if we just simplify it in the way that works for us, um, then, you know, that makes it all the better. And if you need to get help to do that, then, then, you, then, then you do need to do that. You know, even as coaches, healers, etc we all still need to ask other people for help sometimes if we don't understand and can't get where we're going. So really, this is for um, 
everyone watching, um, it really is, you know, listening to what Bill has been saying is simplify your life. Um, and I don't know, um, and I'm not going to go into details with you, I'm bit, but obviously, you know, you've probably already started doing that and there are things you're now making it more simple and it's confirmation um, that yes, um, simplifying your life really does, um, is of benefit to you um, and obviously to those uh, that are watching. And that's, that's a really, as always, the cards, whatever, whatever subject we're talking on, the cards always come out, which I think is absolutely amazing and wonderful. Yeah, exactly. And there you go. You hear what you need to hear for the time. Exactly. So, Ambilla, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? Um, I would like to, <clears throat> excuse me, just share and say to them, Whatever journey you're on, wherever you may be in terms of your, I call it healing journey, because whether you're resisting or not resisting, you're still in some form of healing journey. Don't be afraid to reach out to people, especially given the year that we've had, the seclusion that we've had worldwide, not just UK related. But do not be afraid to reach out to people because there are so many people around willing and able to help. It's just a matter of you getting out of your way and not feeling you're inconveniencing anybody or you're kind of putting somebody out. Go back to the way we used to be in the wars where we were a community. So think of, you know, the virtual community. And yeah, just reach out to people. There's so many people to help you on your journey, whether that's with coaches, healers, you know, muscles, your neighbor next door, you know, your, your own family, friends, whoever it may be, just know that you're not alone. Perfect, brilliant, um, absolutely wonderful words of wisdom. So I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this and found insightful and that these words of wisdom and Bill has given you will help you further on your journey. So I'm Bill, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? very easily search on my name and you will find everything but i am most active on facebook so if you really want to connect with me and for me to be able to get back to you a lot more quicker than any other form facebook is the place but i also do have my own website and everything is under my name so just uh, type in ambila nath and i will be there and what I'll do is I'll put all the direct links to your um, website, your Facebook and your Instagram in the comments anyway, so people can just click on them and go straight to those um, pages for you rather than, than trying to find you. So I'll, I'll put those in um, Wonderful. for you. And of course, if you have reached that crossroads in your life and need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I'd love to be that guide for you please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call to find out more about each other and how I can help you take charge of your destiny. And of course, if you wanna join part of the community, then the Angel Wings membership community um, is there to help you um, grow with Ascended Masters, Archangels, Gods, Goddesses, Oracle cards, and the other people in the community to spread your wings and soar. And of course, if you want to sign up to uh, my free weekly newsletter where you get a guided um, relaxation, me relaxation meditation to help you de-stress and a couple of other free gifts, then please do feel free to do that. Links will be in the comments. So thank you everyone so much for watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get here on their destiny just like you. And if you are watching this on YouTube, then please do subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to be notified of any future um, shows and also the guided meditations, the future life, the angelic Reiki, everything I post on YouTube. And I look forward to seeing you all again, same time, same place next week. And Ambilla, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a complete and utter honour. Thank you. See you all soon. Bye.